amazing um, skills gap challenge today. So I want to go ahead and introduce myself. Hello, hello. We have Adewali. We have Adewunmi here. I also see a couple of new people like Shalom. Welcome. I want to say hi to who else is here? Um, yeah, Adewunmi, I got you. We got Chanel here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Nicole and David. I wanted to say, like, who is excited? Who knows about packet analysis, by the way? Or, like, give me a thumbs up if you know about packet analysis. Okay, we've got a couple of people here. Who is completely new to us with Click? Give me a, um, give me, like, that sunglasses emoji sign. Like, if you're, like, new, this is your first experience with us. All right, so I see a couple of new people. Welcome. Um, my name is Jaya. I work with Click. I'm your programs and uh, community. And I have the amazing coach Sammy here who will be conducting this skills challenge. And I'll be hosting and facilitating your skills challenge today. So I hope that everyone is coming prepared, coming in with questions. And without further ado, let me introduce your Click coach, Sammy. Say hi, Sammy. Hi guys, I'm Sammy. Um, welcome to this of you where it's one of your first challenges and welcome back to our returners. Um, I basically um, made a career switch into cyber and now work as a security analyst and an incident response. So blue teaming is my bread and butter. Um, so basically um, I live in looking at the network, looking at things outside of the network, looking at my endpoint devices, all that fun stuff. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to see how you guys approach this and also share some, I guess, tips and tricks, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We love this. And I feel like we have Amine already like raising your hands. Hold on tight. We're going to definitely raise our hands like in a little bit. want to give like a little bit of intro first. But thank you for the intro, Sammy. Um, I love that, you know, like you are a career switcher and now you're finding yourself like falling in love with cybersecurity. And I think that's what we love, right? So here's the agenda for today. We'll do a quick overview of like just our goals, a couple of like housekeeping rules. Then we'll, me and Sammy will discuss about packet analysis. You will get your live feedback. And after that, we'll have a Q&A. So get ready to raise your hands. And if you're new to AirMeet, feel free to like poke around. There's no mistakes here. Um, there's a Q&A section at the right hand corner. So you can drop your questions there. Um, as you can see, you can also raise your hand and we'll invite you on stage if you raise your hand. So you'll come up on stage. And then at the bottom corner, you will see the chat and you can chat and then the emojis are there too. And so here is our principles for today. Number one, we learn from each other. Again, this experience is always new. Um, it's because like of the discussions that we have with one another and the questions that you guys have. And it's gonna be different every time. Um, this is a safe space to try. There's no grades, no scores, no judging in this experience. We're all, um, we're all here, we're all learning. And lastly, have fun. Like this is really the time to, if you wanna role play, go and role play. This is a scenario. So we have our scenario here so that you can kind of like put on like that thinking cap. And after that, don't hesitate to share any thought that comes into your mind. So I have a big question here. Will this session be recorded? Yes. This session is recorded for you guys and we will have this replay ready for you guys and we'll announce the replay on Slack, but you can also um, stay tuned or subscribe on YouTube. The recording will be there too. Awesome. All right, so how do we interact in this session? I kind of gave a quick overview. 
you're going to raise your hand and you're going to get live feedback and we're happy to work through the challenge with you. So this is a skills challenge. What happens is your coach will provide feedback on what you're work on, where you're stuck um, and ask the questions. We're not really here to show and tell. We're here so that we can work it out with you, which is pretty much packet analysis through Wireshark. Other ways to interact, obviously, this is, you know, the chat is your voice. So feel free to chat in, say hi to one another. Go, you can, again, like ask your questions there and connect. Um, drop down like your key findings and learnings. You can ask your question live. So if you have a question, if you want to walk through a particular part of packet analysis or Wireshark or anything like that, you can come and we'll guide you or not me, Sammy will guide you. <laughs> and then after that, you can use the Q&A box and we have lots and lots of um, different kinds of interactions there. We'll give you some space a little bit at the end, but definitely ask away. I already see some questions on the Q&A and I'll pull that up once me and Sammy start discussing. All right, so let's introduce and let's talk about the task. Um, and then I'll get to you, Mine and Izzy, for your questions after this. So you've been hired to come in as a cons security consultant working for Slack. And Slack has suffered a major data breach and is looking to have their current cybersecurity program assessed by a third party, aka we are the third party. So this is not Slack's first data breach. And due to their application being used by many businesses, the company would like to get a handle on why these breaches keep happening. So I think this is our scenario for today. And the task is you're going to work through real life packet analysis using Wireshark. And this isn't just going through like the PCAP files. It's really getting into the thick of what is the data telling you. Think of it as your detective work. And this is what I also just discovered. And what I love about cybersecurity is this detective work and looking for clues in the network traffic, figuring out what stands out piecing that together and just keeping an eye out for, you know, um, what is happening like behind this data. You're going to jot down what you're doing and why. And if something locks off, you question it. It's a red flag. Maybe it's nothing. I've learned that through Sammy. Like not everything is, you know, like a red flag. But that's really for you to decide. Remember, you're the security consultant. You're going to use Wireshark's tools to back up your statement and have the solid evidence. So you should have analyzed the PCAP files that would have been sent and make a note of your findings um, through your LMS. And then you're going to summarize the findings in a one paragraph to be shared with your clients. So all of us are your clients. So if you're new to Air Meets, and that is our scenario, if you're new to Air Meets, find that raise your hand button now. And you can see it should be on the right side. That is how we'll bring you up for feedback. So. I see a couple of you guys raising your hands. And because I can't see your faces, I love the emoji. This is how I know that you are awake and you are participating and alive and kicking. So feel free to use the emoji button once you found it and now you know where it is. Awesome. All right. So we'll go ahead and get started. This is how it works. You share your work, you get the feedback. We are all gonna learn together. I do have some of these hands raised right at the beginning. So thank you so much. And I'm gonna hand over the mic to Emine. And then after that, we'll like discuss a couple of more, okay? All right, um, Mine, I'm gonna raise your hand. I'm handing over the mic. Hi, Emine, welcome. Hi, uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, very yeah. good. Beginning of the session, just I would like to say hi. That's why I raised my hand. Oh, oh, welcome. Well, thank you so much for saying hi. <laughs> is it your first time, Amina? Yeah, it is my first time, yes. Oh, well, welcome. We're so happy to have you here. And thank you so much for participating. Thank you. I am very excited. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We're excited, too. Thank you, Amine. Thank you. Awesome. So we are, we have a question here, um, Sammy, and we'll start from there. So if nobody's raising their hand, so again, like take a look at the LMS and I'll go ahead and I'll forward that link to you guys in the case that you guys got, you know, like if this is your first time, I'll give you guys the link to that. Um, to the LMS. Remember, the LMS is the 
platform um, to use to get to know what is in the task. So I'll go ahead and I'll drop that in here on our Slack or on our on our messages, not our Slack. It's on the Slack. It's on your Slack channel. But you should be going on here. I drop that into our chat so you guys can take a look at the scenario. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and we'll answer this. Let's ask, like, answer this question. So this is from Izzy from Washington. Is there a standard framework that exists for packet analysis in Wireshark? Um, can I actually get a little bit of clarification on this? What do you mean by standard framework? Like in terms of going through the analysis itself or like, I mean, I'm going to assume yes, that's the right. Okay. Um, so there's not really like a framework for going through it. I mean, so for those of you guys that are new for like, analyzing packets. Um, so a packet capture is basically just going to take, I guess, a snapshot of traffic that occurred on your network um, during a certain point in time. Um, so you start the capture, you end the capture, you get like a log. Um, so there's not really a framework in that this is like the right way to do it or something like that that's written in stone. Um, each person has different, I guess, approaches to it. Um, but it's basically analyzing a log. So you want to try and go through it and sort out normal versus what might not be normal for your environment. So in a packet capture, like, if you just see regular internet traffic or regular data that's being you know transferred on your capture um like somebody visits google.com and puts in a search term for i don't know um funny cat pictures and you know navigates to a site that has like a bunch of funny cat pictures and then you see a bunch of traffic from there because they're clicking on pictures they're looking at whatever they want etc um that it in a, in and of itself would not necessarily be abnormal right like they are going through they're trying to find something okay but say that within that cap it, uh, packet capture if i can talk today <laughs> um packet capture file you notice that there's suddenly like um you know other traffic that shouldn't be there like a session hijack or something coming in from somewhere else instead of just the connections that you're supposed to be seeing and it's you know it's external it's flagging these ips you do your investigation the ip is coming in from i don't know russia um you know it there's like, you know, reason to kind of maybe look into that a little bit more. So there's not a standard framework. You just have to go through everything and kind of pick out what is abnormal and then do your kind of dig into it deeper and 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 try to find out, okay, why is this abnormal or a better explanation? Um, and it doesn't have to just be like normal versus abnormal. You're also looking for things like, is your packet capture exposing things that shouldn't be exposing? Um, you know, is there stuff in the data file that's being transferred that say it wasn't you capturing the packets that somebody else was standing there capturing the packets? Is there stuff in there that they shouldn't be seeing that's being transferred through the data? Um, are there sessions or certain things that are open that are not security recommendations or, you know, security or good security practices. Um, and are, do you see access to that kind of, like that part of the network? Um, and I'm purposefully not really getting into too many details so that you guys can go through the exercise and then we can uncover more. So it's, I, I mean, I'm sorry that I'm trying to be vague in the way that I'm answering it too without giving too much away because um, it helps you to go through the exercise. But a straightforward question would be, no, there's not a standard framework. You kind of go through it and do what works for you. Um, but there are certain ways that, you know, you want to look for certain types of of data that you pick out from there and then you do want to present it in kind of a report format so that people can re if somebody who doesn't know anything or hasn't looked at that capture file comes up to you and says explain it to me you should be able to just go down and quickly show it to them or explain what you found to them
Okay, that's great. Uh, oh, Jaya, you're muted. Okay. <laughs> oh, I was like saying things. So, so she said, like, it's helpful. I'm trying to make sure I analyze and I'm not forgetting anything in the area. And we do have, I just want to make sure that uh, we answer a couple of things here. And again, no questions are like, um, like, we welcome like all questions. So um, just a couple of things like the LMS is where you should have like signed up and that's the skillsbuild.click.com and that should have like all the details of this experience and for like the scenario and the task. So just make sure that you log in through that skillsbuild.click.com like platform so that you can access the scenario on the LMS there. Um, and then there's another question here and says, is there a specific file we should be looking at? I ended up on a Google Drive with lots of PCAP files. Yes, because those are the files, I believe, that you should be analyzing, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yep. Yeah, there is either something or nothing in any or all of the files. <laughs> Awesome. I hope that answers your question, Christine. All right, so we're gonna bring up um, Lakshmi. Welcome, Lakshmi. I believe, like, I I knew that name. <laughs> Welcome, Lakshmi. Welcome to the stage. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. How are you? Yeah. Good. Yes. Hi, Lakshmi. Hi, Zia. Um, um, I'm pretty new to packet analysis and uh, I, I'm just learning right now. So I'm just, I have some findings from the pickup file and uh, I just want to share it with you guys. Mm -hmm. so when I check the uh, authentication, uh, it displays the password is uh, in clear text. Usually password must display as encrypted data right if the encryption methodology is in place mm -hmm. uh, that's the first finding maybe it's pretty basic i'm not sure i just just i'm just sharing it uh and also and Lashmi, can you share like do you have like a screen or are you on your like computer so we can share what you're also looking at when you're giving your analysis All right, just a minute. Um, yeah. And I think that we have a couple of questions here while you open that up. Yeah. Um, uh, Sammy, can you provide like some insights? Like I think a couple of people are trying to open the files without Wireshark. So can you like, you know, if this is like their first yeah. time trying to do it. Sorry, I was just like, like typing like an essay, but it'll it'll be easier to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so um, you, if you don't already have it, you can download Wireshark. It is an open source program that's um, used for pack, like it's, uh, you know, so it's free essentially, and it's used to read packet capture files. Normally your native Windows, Mac, um, Linux, like whatever system you use, it's not gonna have something in it to um, be able to just read PCAP files, like that extension .pcap. Um, also, in terms of opening it, um, I mean, it really depends on your system, but you can right click and do like, you know, choose program to open with or, you know, whatever that prompt is and, and choose Wireshark or add, like add more programs or browse more programs, um, find Wireshark within your applications or your program files, choose it as the application to open PCAP files with, and then just say, always remember to open this kind of file with this program. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know the computer prompts off the top of my head, but <laughs> um, that thing. So um, yes, Kali usually has Wireshark built in. So so if you're using a VM, you should it should be able to open. Um, and if you're using command line, you can just type in like Wireshark and press enter, it'll open. Um, but if you're using anything else, you're gonna have to like right click and choose to open the file, or um, you know if you don't have it yet, download Wireshark and then it, it'll open. Awesome. You won't be able well, to open you. it directly in Google Drive and stuff. It's not going to read the, the file. I did that. I tried to do that. I did. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think I, and again, like I welcome all these questions. Thank you guys for like asking that because yes, like if this is your first time, again, first time skills challenge and you're trying to do it, you don't have to open every single file on Wireshark. You can just pick and choose. I think we have like a ton of files there. 
So pick and choose if you want to like go and present and stuff like that. Just choose like one or two to run so that we can like all learn together. All right, welcome back, Lakshmi. Lakshmi is like, are you in Canada, right? Oh, yes, yeah. Yay. We uh -huh. love, we love, we love. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah, I think I can. All can right. you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I'm talking about uh, authentication. If you see, the password is secret. Are you able to zoom in just a little bit, Lakshmi? Oh, yeah. I, sure, it's sure. very, very tiny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you open up that window also so that we have because we have I think we have a lot of new people here to cybersecurity. Perfect. And then we can make that text bigger. Can you see now? Is it, yes. So yeah, this is why we're better. better. This yeah, this is, is better. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. And I see the password is secret. So it's displayed clear. Clearly, usually a uh, password should be like encrypted underscore something like that it should be supposed to be like that but this is a security issue because it means the data is not encrypted so this is to be flagged so do you want your passwords to be encrypted or what do you want them to be right uh, usually passwords when it's, when it's data that's being transferred like yes, what yes. do you want your passwords to be passwords might be like encrypted right it should be encrypted that's the secure way of transmission transmission of data right is it not i'm not sure. well you so when you encrypt something is it reversible or not reversible uh yeah if we have the decryption key it is so reversible. do you want your password to be encrypted uh no, but uh, I'm some of, some of your your um, peers are trying to help you out in uh, in the chat. Just oh, <laughs> you know. Okay. Reversible hash is not reversible. Yeah, hash is not reversible. That I know. So, do you want your passwords to be encrypted or hashed? Uh, I think hashed. Correct. Yes. Um, when when you're transmitting things like passwords, you don't want mm -hmm. other people to find out, or you don't want it to be reversed in any way. You want it to be hashed. Now that being said, yes, hashes can be cracked. Um, that's what a lot of bad guys do. But mm -hmm. um, you know, it's the better way of transmission is still to use like a strong hash, so that it's not, you know, you're not sending things in plain text over the internet. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And uh, again, FCS status. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me, yeah. And the uh, FCS status I observed. Uh, yeah, FCS status unverified. Uh, maybe this is uh, another flag. Uh, so the tool is unable to confirm the correctness of the FCS for that packet. It indicates uh, a couple of reasons, maybe like a malicious activity in the network or a denial of service attacks or network intrusions. So this is a one more flag, I see. It, it can be. Um, so in this packet capture, yes, but there's also like instances where it doesn't necessarily mean that you're being attacked because it's unverified. It could yeah. just be I mean, there, there are instances where, I mean, mm -hmm. it's it, it's similar to like a certificate, right? Just because you see a certificate for a website doesn't necessarily mean it's secure and safe. So it, it can go both ways. So you would need more context to fully make that conclusion. But yes, I'm, I'm glad that you're exploring those options. Okay. And also, uh, one more That's thing. a good question, Shalom. I want you to Google it. Um. And in the BFD control, this protocol session state is down. Uh, what does that mean? That if you if you if your session state down in the sense like um, the user session is uh, inactive or terminated. Mm, so uh, 
I, I think this is intrusion uh, by the user. So it, he got kicked off from the session. I'm not sure. Like these three, I found it like something, these three flags. I was thinking like maybe something is happening and it needs, uh, you know, uh, further investigation. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. No, that's very good. Um, and f first of all, thank you for coming up and sharing. Um, it's very brave and it's a very good way. The thing with packet capture or pretty much like a lot of things in <laughs> cyber, you get better at it as you do more of it, right? And, and you keep practicing um, because it's a lot of like, so this file was not that big, right? There were a few lines to look through yeah. and a few things to go through. But when you're like getting the packet capture data on a network over say like an hour, you'll have like, I mean, it'll be much larger than this file size that you've, you've gotten of, of traffic data that you're sorting through. Um, mm -hmm. So you get better at this by kind of, and that's why it's kind of split by certain types of traffic and different, I guess, different different uh, categories of traffic, so to speak, for you guys, so that you can get familiar with, okay, these are the kind of things we see as we expand. These are the variables that um, show up and what we get um, in terms of, you know, uh, like what you looked at in having to expand and look at what's under the UDP, what's the BFD control messages coming out, you know, what's being exposed, what are the bytes in, what are the bytes out? And um, I forgot who asked the question regarding what uh, frame check sequence was, but um, so I am I am a huge, huge proponent of saying, go to Google and search for the answer. Um, cybersecurity or anything in IT really like when you search for it and you read on it and you find it you will figure it out and the answer tends to stick with you if somebody's just been feeding you the answer you're going to forget it tomorrow um there are so many acronyms there are so many things in in regard to like okay what is this what is that so you know and, and this is and you know this is also like personal for me because i came from a completely different industry where the acronyms mean something completely different and then you know so put your hands to the keyboard google it and then read it and it will stick i promise um so when you guys ask me like acronyms or you know questions that can be googled i am not going to tell you the answer just as a general rule because you can google it <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Sammy. We have a couple of questions, but thank you so much, Lakshmi, for showing us what you found. Amazing job. I'm so happy that you're here, and thank you so much for participating. Thank Everybody you. can go learn with us. Yay. Thank you, Lakshmi. Awesome. So we have a couple of raised hands. I see you guys. I'll put in on who is on the queue, but I see um uh, Venkata and then Amy will go ahead and present. But let's go ahead, and I see a couple of questions here. Um, like UDP connection to sent password, is it normal from Andres? So can I, I mean, yes, because um, I mean, a lot of things use UDP, right? Um, just what's faster, TCP or UDP? Correct. So, you know, if you're, if, you are or not you but like you know in your environment a device is trying to make a connection to a service um do you think it's more likely um and say it's just like a simple device like a router or a switch or something um and it's connecting to a service would it make more sense for it to go through like a more complicated tcp protocol or a udp protocol Yep. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty normal. Um, mm -hmm. I think I saw another question about the password. Yes, this mm -hmm. one. Um, that's true. In Cisco, you do have to put the password, but the, I, so in security practice, they ask you to change the password, right? So this is like, and these are sample Wireshark files, you guys, they're not, um, you know, they, they're like for practice and, and for like, you know, studying and educational use. And there's repositories. If you just Google like 
Wireshark packet capture files for practice or something. You know, there's like malware samples, there's stuff that people have put, they've just captured it, you know, emulated adversary attacks and then put files for, you know, for practice and for analysis. Um, so yes, in, in, but the security practice with, with any switches, routers, um, you know, firewalls, whatever, um, devices net, like networking devices is to change the default password um a lot of times you don't you don't notice like a lot of places will not do that they will just leave it as like password password or password key or password secret you know um so the another best practice is that when that sends out of your organization at some level keeping in mind defense in depth you can you can make sure settings are such that what is being sent out is is hashed and cannot be um retrieved or cannot you know of course if somebody still wanted to try the default password and get in they might be successful but that's why it's always best practice to change it not that it always happens but <laughs> security is never a hundred percent Thank you so much, Sammy, for answering their questions. All right, we're on to Venkata. I'm handing you the mic. Hi, Venkata. Welcome to the stage. Well, can you hear us? And then you're on mute also. Just. Yeah, Hands if up. you're talking, you're on mute. <laughs> and I see that you're tuning in from Australia. Welcome, welcome. Oh, let me see. Venkata, can you hear us? Hello. Hi. Oh, hello. Okay, there we go. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hi, hi, Sammy. Hello. Hi, Gio. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, so, um, so I'm just checking how to share my screen here. Just one. Yeah. So on the bottom, you should have a square with a little arrow. Yeah. We call it the share arrow, and then you'll be able to select if you're going to do a window or a screen. Um. One second. Yeah, am I in? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um. So yesterday I started analyzing it. So what what I did first are uh, these are the protocols. So I've um, I've started analyzing what are the protocols that are used in this packet analysis. So these are the protocols and these are the abbreviations, full forms and the explanations. I just wrote for myself. So what protocol is doing what things. And then uh, after analyzing some of the packets, I didn't go too deeply, but what what I did was just try to analyze some packets in that in this file in capture and then tp where information is found some information is found let me give so when i'm doing this one so there was a lot of information found what's going on and what is this uh, there's a news website and there's some guys uploading some news to the website and all this stuff in this uh, packet and then uh, what else i found there's some interesting things uh, there's one cookie value value of the cookie in this packet that was uh, found right there just one second So I found this cookie value here. Uh, I think cookie is um, something that uh, the browser stores uh, at that particular time. So if we can manipulate the cookie, we can straight away log into the credentials or enter enter there. So in this, I just found th this one. And what else? 
And yeah, I just got an email in SMTP PCAP file. So what is this? So here I just got some email addresses and I've, I've just got password. I believe this is a password after decrypting. Uh, this is uh, after, I think this is encoded. After decoding, I just found the password is Punjab at the red one, two, three. And these are the mail uh, and I just downloaded the mail as well. So this is this. So this is the mail and these are the attachments I found in this mail. Um, yes, what else? And yeah, uh, I just found Cisco rotor configuration information in this file. So yeah, this is the Cisco router configuration file. So, so what are the Ethernet? either nets ups and downs and uh, what the configuration is all all this was here in this whole thing and yes in this file so tcp there was a book uploaded there was a so someone uploaded the book, uploaded the book. So it's a book that Alice Adventures in Wonderland. So these, I believe these are the findings. I found it. I didn't go into the packet actually. I just saw what's been uploaded and what's of the mission uh, was hided in there. So I think I, sh I need to analyze two more packets. I uh, I don't have time before, so I didn't do it. But after this class, after this meeting, I'll do it. And that's all I found it for now. Yeah, this. Great job, Inkada. Yeah, yeah very good job. I'm in Australia, but thank you so much for showing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, these are the protocols that uh, the packet consists of. So I just google it and then did some research and what all these things can do so there are some bit torrents and bft control which is bidirectional forwarding detection it's like a network protocol designed for detecting faults in bidirectional communication paths between forwarding engines like routers and switches and all these things yeah that's all thank you so i i just want to say props for going through and looking up all those abbreviations and um you know creating your own i guess almost like dictionary like hey this yeah. is what it is and you know yeah. like reference sheet um so because that really helps you learn it honestly um yeah. and you only get better at knowing it and you know by practicing it and just yeah. going through the motions honestly so <laughs> um very good job um a lot of good findings um one thing I want to bring to everybody's attention, though, is that although you guys are looking at kind of the overall generic, like, oh, this is SMTP. First of all, what's SMTP? Uh, simple mail transfer protocol, which is used to Correct. transfer the mails. Yes. So any SMTP kind of um, packet capture is going to have a lot of like information, right? Because it's used for email communications. Um, so any like you guys are looking at the overall okay this is the protocol this is the capture packet capture but you have to drill down a little bit more um and what i mean by drill down is when you're looking at that actual packet capture file um although there's a lot of like protocols ports um the actual traffic itself you also need to look at okay um, there are IPs in there, right? Source IPs, destination IPs. You have to do a little bit more of like OSINTing into what, where is it going? Is this a valid service provider? Is it, you know, um, like in one of the packet captures, um, and I don't remember which one it is, but you can see the actual connection to a torrent site and then like the download of the book, 
Um, yep. So that entire like activity and traffic is mapped down in that packet capture file. So you want to look at, okay, like what is that IP? Is that the torrent site? You know, is that exactly IP reputations, um, web, if you see websites, if you see domains, domain reputations, um, any kind of potential, uh, links to, you know, threat Intel that might be there. So you look, you have to look at your sources, your threat sources. You have to look at, um, uh, like has this domain or IP ever been on like an IOC watch list? Um, do we see any kinds of patterns in there? Like is, is this following, you know, say something like uh, the MITRE attack framework and, you know, like a reference diagram? Uh, is it following some pattern? Am I noticing any of these things? And then you have to look at, yes, exactly. Um, I think Izzy, that's a very good way of putting it. You have to try to see what the story is and why that story might be important to your investigation. Um, and you know, like for the purposes of this exercise, it's okay that you're just calling things out. And I'm really glad that you guys are doing that. Um, and and you know, being able to pick out, hey, this is I, I see this and I see that. Um, really good job on that. But part of the next step is going that next level and forming that story and trying to connect the dots. Like, hey, I can see all of this happening. Um, so just, I guess, poll um, for the group, I guess, is how many of you guys think that if you're in a work environment and somebody goes to a BitTorrent site and downloads a copy of Alice in Wonderland, it would be okay? Um, give a thumbs up if you think it'll be okay. I don't think it's okay. It's not at all okay. Exactly. <laughs> it's probably not okay. So, and yes, you have the occasional, you know, uh, employee who's going to test the limits maybe, but at the same time, if you notice weird activity like that, that's probably something that a security person would then investigate and be like, hey, so this is against our company policy. We don't allow people to go to torrent websites and download textbooks or, or you know, fictional books or whatever. So why is this happening? And that too on our network, right? So that's where you have to start forming your story and doing an investigation. And you can't just, I mean, like, so real world scenario, you can't just go up there and like accuse someone, right? And say, hey, you did this and now you're in trouble, right? Like it doesn't work It's and it's frowned upon because um, I'm sure everybody's heard like positive reinforcement and training is always better than any kind of negative reinforcement and, you know, making sure, okay, like if, if this happened, what are we doing wrong? Is our defense in depth correct? You know, and so it's always going back and tracing your footsteps and trying to figure out, hey, um, A, what happened? B, how did this happen? How do we connect all the dots? C, making sure everything's in place so it doesn't happen again. Um, exactly. You know, um, and it's not all about responsibility either. And I want to make that very clear because again, positive reinforcement and training is a much better way generally to handle things than, than, you know, um, say like firing someone from their job because they did something dumb, um, because they might be really great at their job. Right. So you want to train them, you want to raise your awareness, and then you want to make sure that your environment is protected protected from potentially malicious activity. So say this torrent site is hosted like by somebody on like the dark web or something. And, you know, this is just their, their external, you know, base. And they are also tracking all the information, all the traffic that comes. I saw someone ask something about cookies. Um, no cookies are usually not hidden. You, I mean, if you use the browser, you're going to have cookies stored by the browser and you are agreeing to that when you use like Chrome or, mm -hmm. you know, um, whatever, uh, edge, um, or whatever browser you use. So the only way to avoid that is to use like non-tracking browsers like DuckDuckGo or, you know, incognito mode and stuff. They don't, they don't store anything. Um, but that's why you get attacks like session hijacks and cookie hijacks and man in the middle type attacks where attackers can grab your cookies and reproduce your sessions and pull information. And then, you know, it, it's a real thing. So 
that's why, again, going back to defense in depth, you want to make sure like if, if this is a malicious IP and we know it's a malicious IP or say that while they're downloading that book, they also there was also like a pack Trojan coming along with it. Um, you want to be able to do put in your blocks. So you want to make sure that your environment is protected from this kind of thing happening again. So again, more to your story. And you have to have evidence to support that story, right? And that's what PCAPs can help provide. It can provide evidence on a network level. Um, if you go back to your OCI model on, you know, from your, your data layer, your transport layer, your network layer, um, all the way up to your application layer, it can provide the evidence that you need to, to support your story and to support whatever actions you take to help prevent you know, similar things from happening again. Um, and then when you finally do hone in on your user and send them training and they come back to you and say, hey, it wasn't me, you can be like, uh, nope, it was you. Here you go, spend two hours doing this training. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you, you wanna make sure that you have that in place, so. Yeah. I think we have one more question here um, before we kind of like wrap this up. But again, thank you so much, Venkata, for presenting your findings to us. Um, Thank you, really, really great. I think everybody also appreciated how you organized yeah. all of your notes. So thank you for that. You. that. So we have a question from Adewali from, um, and is it possible for hashed or encrypted messages to be extracted from Wireshark and then later decrypted? So Adewali, I want you to Google and learn about encryption and then learn about hashing and then learn about encoding and then um that, that that's your homework for me today <laughs> um but to answer your question um when you're encrypting things they can always be decrypted um and so if you have the corresponding key whether you know you're you're doing um a, a public or private um if you have the corresponding key yes it can be decrypted so if you're encrypting anything you can decrypt it um Likewise, if you're hashing things, it depends on the hash you use. Um, and you'll understand what I mean by that if you read a little bit more on encryption versus encoding versus hashing. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Sammy. I also like love this question. Will we have another opportunity to discuss this again? And I feel more confident trying to analyze packet captures. Um, you should probably fill out our feedback session link and i will drop this in below if you really guys love this um I, this is how we're able to know you know what skills you guys want to learn you know what you guys want to um or how did you guys feel about these types of sessions or topics so i'll go ahead and i'll drop the feedback form right here that is like perfect like intro for this <laughs> thank you so much izzy for that question but Yes, we will have another time like where we're going to do another packet analysis for sure. But fill that out so that you can let me know like more of this and we're happy to do that. Awesome. So we said, OK, so I think Sandia had like hash can be decrypted using rainbow tables. Is that right? Um, Hashes can be dehashed, not decrypted. Um, and I mean, there there is actual like hacker applications you can use to dehash hashes. So they are not, there's something you can do to your hashes and your passwords so that it makes it that much harder to dehash. Um, and again, read about it and you will know what I'm talking about because there are different types of hashes, right? And the algorithm that you use to hash something also matters. So you you want to, it gets very, very specific when you go to that level. <laughs> it's so funny. And they're like, add salt and pepper that's to that. That's a cute little, well, actually that's a cute little hint. Um, so. <laughs> wow. You guys have to like, such cute like is this like under like a joke where it's like i need to be into the world in order for it to, to do but muhammad is like giving some clues crack station is used for hashing with not all types i mean I really use quite a few it. crackers there's like hashcat there's john uh i mean you can use quite a quite a few 
crackers. Um, but I mean, that's the thing. The the harder you make it, um, it's it's that much harder to crack, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why you want to be very, very careful what algorithm you're using, you know, how, how you're doing it. You want to use what's industry best practice. But on that, I want you guys to go read about it because it'll stick better than me just like telling you, um, mm -hmm. you know, and you can get a little bit more in depth. I, I actually really like um, cryptography in, in security. It's, it's pretty interesting. And if you guys ever participate in, CTFs and stuff. Um, there's actually there's quite a few ones, especially now during holiday time. There's like a Christmas CTF that comes out um, with with some of these like big security people. Um, <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of um, very cryptographic things um, you work with encoding, decoding things. You work with encryption, decryption. You work with hashing. Um, so there's a lot of things that you learn by going through all that stuff in CTF. So if, if you guys are interested in that kind of thing, I, I strongly recommend like trying out a CTF, um, you know, and you don't have to like, you know, feel super competitive about it. If you're kind of mm -hmm. new, it's okay. Just go and try. Um, there's a lot of walkthroughs and stuff. You know, people have written up blogs on how to do certain things or how to find similar things so you could mm -hmm. follow it. And it's just very good practice to understand better about how to do the three different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think encoding, um, was, encryption, <laughs> hashing. Yeah, like when I was discussing with a coach, with another coach about CTFs, it's like everybody needs to have like a game plan. And sometimes like people go to CTFs for you to find out what those other kind of like game plays are um, and you to find out like what's really best for you um, and those CTFs. It, and CTFs, it's capture the flag, right? I'm like making sure like I'm right. Because yeah. it's another acronym. Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, perfect, it's, perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's a capture the flag. <laughs> um, just a couple of more. Is there a video of any walkthrough analyzing all these packets? So because we are using like stuff that is open source and education and stuff like that, um, you will see it maybe in some team sprints. So I'll go ahead and I'll plug in our team sprint. And just when you're into that team sprint aspect and you're working with your teams, then you kind of will get a little bit more into depth about like this packet analysis and PCAP files and stuff like that. So we do have an upcoming team sprint, which is called our vulnerability assessment team sprint. Coach Sammy will be um, coaching with another amazing coach, Coach Aisha. We are starting the team sprint after our US Thanksgiving holiday. So um, kickoff date is November 27. So please sign up and apply if you're even like interested about learning more how this all kind of like works together in a bigger scenario. Um, so please join us. Um, I will go to, to your announcements on Slack, but I'll go ahead and I'll post it here. Just uh, give me a little bit here. Uh, give me a little bit of time. But I'm really, really loving the discussions and let me see here, Izzy said, I'm a beginner and I was able to finish in the top 10% after making it only through two challenges my first time. <laughs> um, and yeah. then, yeah. Um, and I'm sure Izzy can, you know, vouch, but you can find a lot of resources to kind of, you know, help you learn how to do some of the challenges and stuff like that. When I started CTFs, um, when I started in cyber, actually a little before I like started in cyber, but it, um, I was lost. I didn't know what they wanted me to do. I could only get through like the the practice questions that they give you points for for fun. <laughs> but you know, eventually you, you get better. So it's um, you know, it, it is kind of fun to do. Uh I don't have, have as much time now as I would like to do them, honestly. But if you're really into like cryptography or you know, just kind of doing like image analysis, like file analysis, all that kind of stuff, like it's a really good way to get started. Um, in terms of the question about like finding resources, so not specifically for answers to this, because, you know, if people want to come back to this and stuff, I mean, there's a limited amount of uh, like, well, it's not really limited, but, you know, the ones that we wanted to pick and choose for these challenges. So we don't want to like mm -hmm. do like an answer thing that's like floating around and then everybody just, <laughs> you know, gets the answer because it's posted mm -hmm. somewhere kind of thing. Um, so so, but there's a lot, and this is, I mean, all of this stuff was open source and were samples that were online. So you can probably find like YouTube videos, um, other websites, blogs, people that went through similar analyses and then 
you know, connect the dots, but there's like a ton of resources out there. Like YouTube has so many free wire shark videos from all these other security influencers and stuff. So <laughs> um, it's a great place to learn. Amazing. So all else fails, you Google it first. <laughs> that is really the key. Well, Sammy, we're like, this whole like this whole hour just like flew by so here like any final feedback for anybody here especially if they're starting out they're kind of like for getting a little bit more of a snippet into cybersecurity. any feedback about what you've seen today or and where they should be going to next yeah i mean just for those of you guys um you know first of all thank you for everybody who came up shared um participated um and all that and um you know, for those of you guys that, you know, were like, okay, I can understand this. I can understand that. Like, that's great. You know, you're right where you need to be. It's, that's how you start. Um, Wireshark is actually like a pretty, for an open source tool, it's a pretty robust tool. Um, and, you know, security people like to use it because there's a lot more you can do with it. You can like start putting in filters and, you know, as you, as you start using it more and more um, and you want to like, you know, filter data and you want to just look at certain things or, you know, certain aspects of certain things, you can start putting in filters, you can start um, just extracting what you need and just going through that. Um, and you, you get better, I guess, at hunting for things and finding things when you need to. Um, and so just keep at it and just keep trying to build on what you have now. For those of you guys that were completely lost, it's okay. Don't get discouraged. Um, you will get there. Uh, the mm -hmm. first time like I opened Wireshark, I was like, what in the name is this? Like, I, you know, I don't even, where do I click? What do I do? Why is this here? Um, I didn't know what a PCAP file was. And, you know, here I am today, almost, you know, looking at these on an almost daily basis. So um, don't get discouraged. Just use Google as your best friend. I promise. Um, use it watch videos, reach out to other people in the community. Most of the time, like the security com community is like super nice, super welcoming. And there's always mm -hmm. people willing to like help you or point you to resources that can help you. So um, don't get discouraged at all, just keep going. And this is one of those things you only get with practice. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to put your hands on and just try and go through things and go through files and go through logs and just keep going. <laughs> so, um, but very good job. I mean, I'm really like happy to see all of you guys here today. So thank you so much for that, Sammy. And I think Shalom and I know other learners want to connect with you on LinkedIn. So please feel free to like drop that or I'm happy to share that also if you're willing. To yeah, share actually, I was going to ask you because I have like 30 tabs open and I can't find my LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll drop it in we'll drop it in also on our um IB, uh, IBM skills build X click uh, Slack channels. We'll we'll drop that in there um shalom for this too. So we are happy to continue to connect you guys to again like all of our amazing coaches. Um I feel like we've like reflect, we've discussed, we continue to ask um, all of these questions. Um again, there's a lot of resources and your all of our learning really here at Click, uh, especially for our cybersecurity program, is made possible because of IBM Skills Build. So we want to thank them and continue to look into the resources there to support your journey here at cybersecurity. I'm going through like the intro to cybersecurity myself um, in this program, and I'm learning a lot for from all of our amazing coaches. I'm actually going to hop into the setting up a virtual machine with Coach Duran. So I hope to see some of you guys there. We're like, we're doing this back-to-back -back session. So lots of more um, events, uh, not events, learning experiences for everybody. And it's pretty amazing on what we have in store for you guys for the end of the year. And we cannot wait also for next year because there's going to be a whole lot more that we're already planning for next year already. So drop that in, put it on their feedback, use the Slack or DM me if you want. Uh, my Slack is always open. And I'm really here for you guys for, um, as your advocate here for your cybersecurity journey. So thank you, Coach Sammy and everyone who participated. Let round of applause, give those hearts and emojis.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to thank everybody again for tuning in. Honestly, you guys all like made my day and really love how everybody came through, participated, and this is really what we want and how we learn. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much, Sammy. Thanks, <laughs> thank everyone. You.